Welcome to The Weekly. I'm Jeremy. I'm Chris. And this week on The Weekly, Roll20 buys Demiplane, Steam Forged buys War Machine. <laughs> Who bought us? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're waiting. We're no, still no, waiting, waiting for our offer. Instagram is training their AI on your art. And they didn't buy anything. And you know, they're not paying for it. Mm-hmm. And Adam Bradford is hired by Fantasy Grounds. Okay. So it's all kind of commingled and will kind of untangle everything that's going on here. So let's start with uh, Roll20. So Roll20 announces, and I don't know if this is a good thing. I mean, I, it seems like necessary, but it seems like one of those shortcuts. It's something they probably should have built out themselves, but. I don't trust Roll20 and their implementation of this. Okay. They have purchased Demiplane, and we've mentioned Demiplane many times. It's a digital tool set, and they keep expanding. Uh, they've done a lot of uh, free league games, Pathfinders on it. Um, I think the uh, Dagger Heart. You know, there's a lot of stuff that uh, has been added, and it's it's basically like a, an alternative D and D Beyond. It's just digital set uh, tool sets for creating characters and and uh, character creation and uh, keeping track of. Okay, things. so is it as someone who does not play online and doesn't use VTTs is Demiplane a VTT like? Mm-mm. So it's, it's only just a digital tool set, tools. Yeah. yeah. So I would need something else yes. like Twitch right. so it's, or it's, Discord. It's D&D Beyond. So there's no tokens, no grids. Maybe you can generate tokens with it, okay. but there's no grids. It's just, so a lot of people, and I think the reason, and they say this uh, very often, that the reason uh, 5e really took off is because of D&D Beyond. Because okay. Wizards never had a really good digital tool set. They were kind of, their websites were kind of wonky. Yeah. D&D Beyond was really elegant and you didn't need the rule books. You basically could roll up a character without dice, without a character sheet, without pencil, without anything, and you had a character. So some people don't even really know, you know, what the software is doing behind the scenes sure. and, you know, what it's adding, how many dice you're rolling. You're just clicking generate these stats and things. And uh, so it really lowered the barrier for creating a character for D&D. And you could be playing 5e, you don't even know what the rules are. And so then the, you know, DM could kind of, you know, could ease you into it right. and walk you through it. It's not like, you know, read this player's handbook right. and get back Which to me. Which we, mm, okay, <laughs> we actually did that with a player. Mm-hmm. Like way back in the day when 4 you came around, it won't take too long for the story, we had a player in a board game group mm-hmm. that we could toss a, like a dictionary size rule book at and they would read mm-hmm. and play these very complicated board games. And so this is back in the Idle Word Hands era, we figured, okay, we'll do the same thing and we just kind of tossed the 4E player's handbook at him and said, you want to play, make a character. And he took one look at the book and said, I'm not interested, <laughs> which was kind of a surprise because like if yeah, yeah. someone would do that with a huge rule book for a board game, you'd assume the same, but mm. no. So yeah, maybe may, may very different because with an RPG, there's so much that's like, and then what? What, you know, it's yep. like, yeah, there's the, you know, all the social interaction and stuff. And none of that is spelled out. And it's like, so what do I actually do when we're at the table? I would argue yeah. then that's a very well, poorly thought out game, right? <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to bag on D&D. Mode. Okay. Because I was just curious because, okay, so getting back to Roll20 buying Demiplay. Mm-hmm. So Roll20 now has sort of all these things and tools. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's over there. Has all these tools that they can now put in their virtual tabletop. Right. Because Roll20 is a virtual tabletop. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's like adding, um, because I think you can port from D&D Beyond, you can port the character into Roll20. Okay. I think they had tools for doing that. Now you're going to not leave Roll20, basically. Right. Okay. So this acquisition will give you character management, creation tool sets. Uh, so easy character creation for multiple game systems. So it's not uh, unlike... is the only one that matters. Yeah, okay. like, unlike D&D Beyond, it's, it's, it's everything that they support so far. So this will create, and, and also now we know uh, Roll20, Drive Through RPG, that's all connected. Yep. So it's it's everything. And so that's going to be, in in a way, especially with indie RPGs, that's going to make um, Roll20 a little bit of a kingmaker. Because if it's easier to, you know, everything in their system to play it, and they haven't done the digital tools yet. So they, they mentioned that in, in this statement that they get to choose what order they start adding these games in because they're not just D&D. So they're going to add other games, uh, character creation tools. You can't do it yourself. It's their kind of closed platform. So that's a little that's a little interesting. So, uh, yeah, so Roll20's uh, CEO, Ankit Lal, says that their goal was to create a seamless user experience by adding these digital tool sets. Our goal is to help characters connect, uh, help 
uh, gamers connect everywhere and help them to get into games so that they can hang out with friends and family. And that's what we've been doing with World 20 and with Drive Through RPG, DM Skill, Demi Plane, and Dungeon Scrawl. So all kinds of uh, all uh, all of a kind under the same roof. Our end goal is to create a seamless experience where uh, people have one place to purchase their content. They seamlessly take their characters from in person to VTT. They can buy PDFs, print on demand books, or digital compendiums to make it easier for everyone. So we will see if that's uh, actually a thing. And so Demiplane was uh, uh, founded by uh, uh, the executive Adam Bradford, who we're going to be talking about again, who was also one of the founders of D&D Beyond. I think the, yeah, the founder. And uh, so D&D Beyond was bought by Wizards, uh, and they are including that now. I think they're, they're rolling that or just kind of trying to take their subscribers over into whatever they're doing for their VTT. And hope hope for the best. But uh, already, uh, Demiplane has, like I mentioned, uh, Paizo, so Starfinder, Pathfinder, uh, Critical Roles, Darrington Press, uh, Free League Publishing, and Paradox Interactive uh, titles uh, in, for their tool set. So they can build t- a tool set for hundreds of new game systems. And uh, Roll20 now potentially can support new Kickstarter campaigns, which is another big thing. So okay. uh, they'll provide a full suite of digital options, PDF distribution to VTT modules, digital character sheets, and character creation options as part of you know campaigns. When when they, they'll build something when someone is offering like a, a you know second edition or whatever to kind of sweeten the. Uh, so in the campaign. So Demi Plain's uh, current CEO, uh, Peter Romanesco, Romanesco, said, uh, what you'll see is a very concentrated effort to uh, to bring the distance between each of these three different solutions now under Roll20 brand, uh, starting, uh, starting to bring them closer. So both in digital proximity, so that all of a sudden you can start to use things across the whole platform, whether you're playing in person or online. And you'll notice that these changes one by one but uh, it's something that we're really committed to, so it's not going to be a sudden thing. It's probably going to be very gradual, and they may <laughs> they may not execute well at all. So in addition, oh, this is an interesting thing. We'll, so we'll be bringing in a whole new bunch of great games on the platform to find out really unique ways to bring Demiplane into Drive-Thru RPG and virtual tabletop. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot more virtual items you know things that you're only you using, yeah, tokens and things that are going to go right in. Because, like, as, like yeah. I said, as someone who doesn't play online or use virtual things, I'm trying to wrap my head around what this is going to mean. Because it can't. I'm not going to say like Monopoly, but I kind of forgot that Wizards is trying to do its own VTT, and they're trying to bring those subscribers from D and D Beyond over. So I wonder. <coughs> sorry, I wonder if Roll Twenty is going to focus initially on other games mm-hmm. yeah i think they would have to but initially the funny thing is they already were in development of a character creation tool set for D 5e well, I mean, okay <laughs> so now they had they say and they promised okay we're going to finish that and then it's going to be directly competing you know with wizards of the coast and then we're going to <laughs> add but they said that what they're doing with this digital tool set will be already a massive upgrade to what roll 20 is doing with character management and i think majority like you know 50 more than 50 percent of people using roll 20 are playing 5e so right. that's why they're they're not going to dump this well okay D being what it is not developing tools to allow people to play D 5e on your vtt is basically leaving money on the floor. Yeah, yeah. But with Wizards trying to make their own, Mm -hmm. I wonder, I don't know, I'm not a CEO, but I'm thinking like, do you try and do it now and keep people playing on your tabletop? Or do you wait for whatever WotC makes and then have an alternative ready saying, if you're like, if you're not happy with that or if you don't like, I don't know. Yeah, well, and I think we're going to see the same things we saw with um, rights for local, like especially like sports events for local television and cable fighting. So you have blackouts, right. blackout stations, or like with uh, Amazon, Google, and Apple fighting over, it, you know, how you can buy stuff and what store you can buy through. So they're just going to start saying, okay, well, you can't buy the Dungeon Master's Guide through uh, Drive Through RPG anymore <laughs> because I, it's only going to be available if you're in our Wizards of the Coast. I have D&D to imagine Watsi's going to do that. Yeah, they're going to start doing it. And so it's going to, you know, so people that are already invested in this, it, it's going to be weird. And I don't know how that's going to, that's going to make them look bad. I don't know if that's going to get them to lure people over to what they're doing because they're already being jerks about it. Because if you're already in Roll20 and you've been, you know, playing a subscription, everything's set up and it's just going to get better. You know, Roll20 is getting upgraded. 
um, you, you're not going to want to make that move. And well, the maybe only you're going to have to make the decision about sticking with 5e and whatever content is yeah. available on Roll20 right. or jumping to whatever Watsy makes for the next edition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that, that might be interesting because it may cut their what they're trying to not do by not saying sixth yeah. edition, <laughs> but it might cut their uh, their player base in half. Yeah interesting yeah so this is we, why i just keep it at physical and playing physical spaces right? yeah right <laughs> <laughs> which is also why i guess i don't play at all right <laughs> yes so uh yeah the roll 20 ceo goes on and on but yeah i think it's basically the same kind of stuff so we think the combination of the roll 20 vtt and demi playing character ecosystem is going to uh make it as easy as possible to build your first character and that's really i think what D, &D beyond did um right. it just made it so easy you don't have to know anything about it. they just kind of walked you through uh, options and what a game was. So sorry, I thought it was going to be buried on some kind of kind of like board game avalanche there for a second. <laughs> no, right? no, no, no. <laughs> right. Like on it, actually, like I don't, I don't care is a strong term, but I was thinking any kind of accessibility tools mm -hmm. to make a game easier to play. Okay, fine, that, that's a good thing. So I, I actually don't think people need to know the rules mm -hmm. in and out for a game, right? Like it was a barrier, yeah, and it yeah. still is a barrier to entry, right? Here's these three books, you go, oh Jesus, mm -hmm. I'll play something else, right? So like not knowing the rules, because the VTT does it for you, mm -hmm. fine. Right? I, I, I'm not going to get up on like a whole horse and be like, oh, you're not a real role player because you don't know the rules yourself. No, <laughs> right. whatever, like you don't have to be any kind of programmer to play a video game, right? Anyway. Yeah, so yeah, this is this is all interesting because Roll Twenty, you know, they announced their Discord integration. They announced they're they're redoing their whole interface, this rocket ship icon kind of okay. re rebuild for uh, whatever they're doing. So yeah, they're they're really positioning themselves to be at the, in the best possible state to offer the best possible product to compete with whatever Wizards is, and we haven't even seen that, and we haven't even we don't even know how frustrating or pressures on yeah. the Wizards not fall on their face. Yeah, right. But the thing I'm afraid of, though, I've seen this before with uh, especially like uh, email platforms where they buy smaller companies yeah. that have really good technology. They fold it in. They kind of use a few of the features. And, and then, then they just, enchantification it. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of yeah. goes away. So yeah. if they're already working on this D&D thing, they just might buy Demiplane to keep that off of the table for I somebody think. else. And then they, in, in, they're they just going to use their, their whatever they're doing for D&D characterization, just kind of, you know, crunch it over to um, these other systems. It's not going to work well. And it's like, well, you had Demiplane. It was already done. Eh, you know, we, we, that yeah. that was kind of the first thing I thought. Yeah. Like they bought this up because it's a rival and they didn't want anyway. Yeah. Right. So Adam Bradford, where where will he go? Because now he's not involved in D and D Beyond or Demiplane, and uh, we have an answer to that okay. coming up later. So next acquisition, we're just going to go down the list here. Yeah, sure. So Steam Forged acquires the Iron Kingdom's War Machine and more. So there was an announcement, and it was a little confusing. We talked about this a little off the cast because yeah. it seemed like a collaboration, a partnership. No, 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 no. They just they bought, bought them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when Steamforged uh, kind of posted their announcement, uh, they're saying, we uh, have got important news to share with you. Here at Steamforged, we are beyond excited to announce we've acquired the incredible Iron Kingdoms universe from our friends at Privateer Press. And that also includes the uh, Formula P3 paints and some other titles, some that have crowdfunders that haven't been fulfilled really? yet. And people that are like, what's what's going on with this? I would like to see something. So they're, they're kind of gradually rolling out FAQs. And I, I read the, the latest one that came out last night. But they said, we're working together to design on design and development of all the lines that Privateer Press, says, the Iron Kingdom uh, from Privateer Press. Their proven 10 year track record of creating, developing and delivering large scale games to thousands of players and retailers around the world is is what uh, Steamforge is going to bring to the table. They, they're, they've done well executing for uh, uh, crowdfunding. Not great. Uh, they kind of stepped away from Guild Ball. It's still available and they're supporting it. They, they left a community to support it and there's uh, free STLs and a free okay. rulebook to for their starter set, and then you can still buy okay. all of the um, the guilds uh, miniatures, but they've kind of stepped away from it. So I think uh, that gives a good opportunity for them to really focus on something that maybe they can help really build up a competitive scene because it's something that Guild Ball never quite got is a really, I mean, it was isolated. I think, uh, you mm. know, there was a, a local game store in Japan that was pushing it really hard and holding tournaments and people were trying to get Guild Ball to be a thing and just you know the, under the shadow of uh, once they did a second edition of Blood Bowl you know right. it's, it's how about happening. Monster Apocalypse oh yeah so that's that's the uh, that's the thing that was that they're talking about is like 
what are we getting this what's happening yeah. what's the state of that yeah that's where a lot of the questions came up and they'll, they'll be answered later they haven't said exactly what's going on but everyone seems pretty thrilled and and also um the oh, funny thing is to be? uh people yeah, of course <laughs> corporately you have to be but people like matt hart and uh some of the uh, uh other other people involved in steamforge were actually early like uh organized play community leaders okay. uh for war machine so they okay. have love for the product so that's a good thing to see it's not just oh this is a good ip and we right. will mine this ip for all it's worth and then dump it when it doesn't make any more money they'll just do that just with appreciation for <laughs> right. the ip i don't know yeah so so um uh, that's nice to see Steamforge has people that that love uh, War Machine, and so that makes them very excited to do this. So they've said we're transitioning the range out uh, to our website, so everything's going to start appearing on the Steamforge website. Uh, orders will remain uh, will reopen later this week. So right now you can't order anything. Okay. I think maybe you can the the STLs and oh that that's yeah the the stuff that they already had on Steamforge is still available. The Iron Kingdoms, you know, War Machine stuff is moving over. There's no mention of hordes. Uh, they didn't specifically name hordes. I guess that it's included in the Iron Kingdoms. That's, it's yeah. yeah, it's part of the Iron. Well, yeah. if they're saying, I don't know. Yeah, but that right, we're transitioning the range. Blah, blah, blah. Our main focus is War Machine. Oh, okay. Yeah, our main focus is War Machine. Right, and the and Iron later. Kingdoms RPG. Yes, right. Yeah. So that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure hordes is part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But if they're focusing, they're just saying we're focusing on this game, right? War Machine. And the Iron King's RPG. Maybe Horde support will come later. Mm. Yeah, because they, they mentioned the Formula P3 uh, Paint Warcaster, their new kind of their newer sci-fi title that I don't think got gained much ground. And then Riot Quest. Those are the only things that are mentioned by name. Yes. So Guild Ball, Guild Ball and God Tier are kind of yeah slowly going to be. Uh, they're still. They said they're still scheduling um, events for everything, and they will. Everything that was planned by Privateer Press for Gen Con, they're going to um, make sure happens. Yeah. So they're still running all the scheduled events for War Machine and Warcaster. Uh, and yeah, and then they just did a June 6 update. And I've got a few of the uh, little points for that. And the next thing that's coming up is a uh, Iron Kingdoms uh, RPG Kickstarter for the Strange Light Workshop. So they're going to take kind of, kind of take over and manage that, which means it'll probably get fulfilled and produced a little more timely, maybe, than other things that, <laughs> that have happened. So, um, yeah, so they, they were saying the um, the popularity for War Machine has kind of dropped Trail off. Off. You know, we've we've seen a, they at one time had a very competitive, vibrant, competitive scene, uh, but that kind of means not much in the way of a casual player base. And Steamforge wants to kind of concentrate on all of that: the hobbyist, the casual, mm -hmm. and the competitive. That's okay. a, that's a big ask, but uh, and also too though. So the fourth edition launched in the middle of the pandemic, so that didn't help it much. Right. And what it also did is uh, retired some of the legacy models to you know kind of legends status, right. and that pissed people off because yeah, then you got to buy new stuff or you can't play it. So yeah, so both uh, Richard Loxham and Matt Hart were UK War Machine tournament organizers. Uh, so yeah, they got some love for the game, uh, and of course, yeah, the um, uh, the statement of everyone's excitement is is more than apparent. But the uh, the latest uh, so the, in the latest FAQ and kind of the statement that they released, they said the two things that they want to focus on initially uh, first were strengthening the supply chain, so ensuring the models are always available without interruption. Um, and this means a bunch of work on the back end, the production facilities, inventory control, and logistics. Okay. So that they're gonna get, you know, everything will make it to your friendly local game store, which is a, a thing that Privateer Press has choked on a few times. I think in their third edition, I remember hearing people say, they went to conventions and they had the rule book, but no models. And the next convention they went to, they had the models and no rule book. Right. So they're yeah. definitely having supply chain issues and then expanding the game's reach. So they want to share it with as many people. So focus on solid marketing for all of their Iron Kingdoms uh, properties. So that means things like organized play, cool events and narratives for gamers to enjoy. So yeah, and then yeah, things like running yeah. demos and yeah. stuff at conventions. So yeah, hopefully this will be. I, I've I've liked uh, I've liked what Steamforged has done. Uh, I like a lot of the you know the quality of their games is good. It's not amazing, yeah. but it's it's good. You know, and if they're going to be oh the other thing they they did talk about that I didn't copy into my notes is um they said for now they're going to stick with the resin. Uh, production, but they're moving gradually everything over to hips. So the first thing they're going to do for the in is injection plastic for their starter sets. The new starter sets that are coming out are going to be like you know on sprue injection mm. molds, uh, and then the uh, uh, they'll still make available though, so that no models are kind of you know in limbo. They're still going to make available resin, but they're going to move away from that in the future. Okay. So this is a good thing. I mean, that may, may mean a new life and something that you know Maybe. it's not uh, you know 
competing greatly with 40k anymore but uh some people may uh, get back into it it's got a fun you know i, I like the iron kingdom setting there's a it's a fun steampunk aesthetic it's not it's not as ugly um in a, a lot of respects as the uh, it just is kind of like you know funky steampunk industrial right. not this uh yeah blighted uh <laughs> well, i mean depending on where you go yeah, yeah. right but uh, yeah that's right that's true and they they've done a lot of fun things privateer press has you know come up with a lot of fun settings and even like kind of like scale down board game level you know games using their characters and stuff so we'll oh, see yeah, that's right yeah we'll see if, what uh what comes of this all right. So before we tell you the fate of uh, <laughs> of Adam the, the uh, of Adam Bradford, let's talk about some other. So I guess the uh, Butlerian Jihad is imminent. The uh, war one would hope. Yes, yeah. <laughs> humanity's war against the machines continues. So artists threaten to leave Instagram in droves over AI art training news. So uh, yeah, Meta has just basically said uh, we own you. Yeah, it, their their new, their new terms are saying, or they, I guess they they've uh, com- confirmed directly that yes, they are training their AI image generator using public ev- all public images on Instagram posts. So that just made all of the artists that are using it as a promotion tool go, God damn. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, the platform is increasingly becoming you know saturated with paid ads. So it's not even it's l- becoming less usable than it was before. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're, they're saying you know we're getting amazing quality images from our, their AI image generator. Yeah, because you're using some of the best artists you know out yeah. there because they they used your platform. And so now yeah, people are are leaving in droves. I so creators so. are angry, saying that they were unaware of this use and that Meta uh, did not. Uh, secure consent. Uh, many artists have been publishing posts and stories on Instagram to declare ownership and copyright of their work and to say they do not consent to this AI, uh, to train the AI with this work. I mean, that's not going to be effective in any no, way. Really. And they've made it as difficult as possible. Yeah. There is an opt out, but there, it's made it as difficult I've as possible. I've tried doing it. It's, it's, yeah. I, I gave up, right? Which is what they were expecting people yes, to do. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so some artists are deciding to just delete their content and leave the platform. Yep. An alternative has kind of appeared. Uh, Kara um, is a, a, a platform specifically for artists that says no uh, AI generated work can be posted on here. We don't, you know, we, we will uh, curate and delete all of that. And you're, we're never going to, you know, be using your images for anything. So people are seeing that as an alternative, but always alternative social media is tiny compared to what you're going to be walking away from with Meta. So our only hope is the users and the uh, EU um, do have a chance to uh, opt out. They didn't make it easy, but if that becomes a thing that they have to obey, hopefully that, you know, that'll help artists in other locations. So so they go through the whole. So if you want to opt out in the EU settings, help, help center about AI and Instagram, learn how to use Meta. (laughs) You learn how to use, uh, use, learn how Meta uses information for generative AI model features. And then (laughs) you got to go all the way through that just to uh, probably send them an email and demand that you're opting out. Yeah. The thing I saw is that you had to provide, you had to provide like proof that they were Uh, actually using your Oh, content geez. and you're just like oh, oh wow like, that's what that's why kind of why i gave up i'm mm-hmm, like yeah i don't want mm-hmm. my stuff to be used to it and then i'm like how am i going to prove mm-hmm. this I, well and that's the I trick too is once it's yeah. gotten stirred in there enough with enough people's work it's not going to be distinguishable at least to a, a court or a yeah. judge that uh that you it's been used yeah so you get a message after you try this saying thank you for contacting us we don't automatically fulfill requests and we will review them <laughs> consistent with your local laws yeah, sure. means that if you're it. not in the eu go fuck yourself yeah, basically. <laughs> yes so uh medicines it only uses I- images and public posts so you can make your account private <laughs> and then the the ability to promote your work is completely yeah. canceled. So that doesn't make any sort of sense. And then uh, people have suggested, you know, anti AI tools like Nightshade to um, make the imperceptible change that will right. screw up the uh, training for AIs, but we'll see. So, but J. Scott Campbell has stepped in to talk about this. And it doesn't seem, it's so much now seems like just pulling up the ladder stuff. It's just like, I make so much money off of this. My career is established. If you steal, I got my if, yeah, if you, yeah. If you, you steal my stuff, I'm still gonna be making money from it. You can steal my old stuff. I don't care. I'm making new stuff and I'm selling it. So up goes the ladder, <laughs> and all the people that are just beginning their career are gonna be totally uh, yeah, have their legs taken out from under them. So on his uh, Facebook account, uh, J. Scott Campbell, who's a superstar comic book artist that you may know from Gen 13 and Image Comics, um, has um, 
He sympathized with uh, fellow artists who are irritated by this. Uh, he says he has created an account on Kara and will, uh, you know, try to, um, you know, post to it and keep it, uh, uh, you know, uh, updated because the, the platform is specifically designed not to allow AI mm. generated art to be shared. Uh, but he says artists shouldn't be too quick to abandon platforms that are valuable for artists in the industry uh, and where uh, being seen is so important to their success. So regardless of what Meta wants to do to your art, if you're not on Instagram, you're not going to be seen. You're not going right. to be present in the community of artists when people are looking at portfolios or you know when people recommend you. They say, oh, what's their Instagram? Well, they're not on Instagram. They're on Kara. What's Kara? Yeah. Right. <laughs> So uh, why uh, Campbell won't be leaving uh, the major social media platform uh, is his main point was saying he knows it's frustrating, but uh, quote, he says, well, certainly I understand and respect the principled actions and weighty decisions others in my field are making to exit Instagram over Meta's AI image scraping policies. I would strongly encourage those uh, out there to make that make a living from their artwork, whether it's from using Instagram as a hiring portfolio or like me as an advertising uh, tool for my art business. Do not make a big decision about this emotionally. So I guess, you know, kind you know of what? look at the numbers, kind of weigh the. Uh, I got to agree with them. Yeah. Yeah. Is like, it good? Yeah. Knee jerk is not going to. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, like if it's kind of mm, similar. Like, OK, like think about <clears throat> third party creators, mm -hmm. right? having this discussion like if you make stuff for D, &D right or if you make stuff and you promoted it on twitter right like back when twitter kind of got tanked right mm -hmm, there was mm -hmm. this big discussion about oh yeah, yeah artists or or content creators or writers taking a hit just because mm. the audience of whatever social media thing they're going to relocate to is so small right so yeah considered so personally you have experience with this so do you feel that your reach for your itch.io content mm -hmm has been lessened by not being on Twitter. It's probably mostly lessened because I don't put anything up oh, new on well, it, oh, right? That, but, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I'll actually have to go back and, and look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. But, actually, I'm not going to say either way. Mm. But I do know, anecdotally, I do know people who said, like, I used to be kind of at least getting these number of hits back on Twitter. Now I'm getting, like, uh -huh. these number of hits just because, yeah. Yeah, because the discovery, we, we talked about that, the discovery on itch.io is not great. No, so no. you use social media for people to know what you were putting up there, what, you were, what yeah. your latest yeah. stuff was. Yeah, so, yeah, that's difficult. So uh, Campbell added, I understand the slow creep of AI is scary and we're, we're all inclined to fight back, but I'm not sure hiding our artwork away from the world at, uh, on a small upstart untested platform exclusively is a wise choice, I'm referring to Kara. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's a difficult thing because, and you kind of were in this because most people function in this kind of digital world, you know, whether it's communication tools like um, uh, Discord or Zoom or whatever, you are agreeing yeah. to, for these companies to have a certain amount of say over what you're doing with your career. And you, you're gonna have to accept that. And, uh, you know, it, it's gonna just be this, this like cost. It's a new kind of, I think, cost to ex the access. And uh, we're gonna have to kind of figure out if it's worth it and uh, creating alternatives is not you can't we can't just keep creating oh no oh no so now Kara says that they you know they have some political view that we don't agree with so let's get out of Kara and go to well, the, the other well, like, oh. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so no, we could I'm get just to, I'm just waiting for Kara to get bought by Instagram oh yeah yeah well and that's the thing well, too that's, that's, that, yeah that's right? that's the danger is that yeah an alternative is created and uh yeah it just well I suppose I was thinking about this I mean thinking about like VTTs and all that stuff right like I suppose no one is really forced to be bought. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's there's always a level of money oh, yeah. where someone is just going to say, yeah, okay, so, yeah. yes, right? There, the, 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 but yeah. most people have, do have a price. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I think everyone has a price. Everyone has a price. Just right. some people are way higher, right, than other ones, right? <laughs> right? But, I mean, on the other hand, not on the other hand, but even if Kara said no to being bought by Instagram, like, what does Instagram have to like? I'm sure there are things Instagram could do or Meta could do where it's just like mm -hmm. indirectly affects Kara's numbers, right? Yeah, and so uh, yeah, so Kara's statement is no AI forever. So their stance that they uh, uh, articulate on their site is we do not agree with generative AI tools in the current unethical form. We won't host AI generated portfolios unless the rampant rampant ethical and data privacy issues around the data sets are resolved via regulation. Uh, in the event that the legislation is passed uh, to clearly protect artists, we believe AI generated content should always be clearly labeled because the uh, public should always know or always be able to search uh, for human made art and media easily. 
And the last thing that uh, Campbell says, which kind of makes sense, and this is very old school because yep. this goes back to actually putting stamps on letters, is uh, artists should cultivate a mailing list. Um, if there are fans of your work, uh, you the best way to directly reach them is just give them e you know a newsletter or updates about, I just released this, I just did this, it's here. And that kind of goes around the whole social media thing. And you have you know direct, direct access to people that are interested because you know on social media, you don't get to all of your users don't see your posts. You know, it's it's because of the algorithm and how they want to manipulate ads. You have ten thousand followers. You know, five hundred see the everything everything that you post, and then depending on how things are scored, other people are access you know, have access to them, or how much how many ads you buy on Meta. However, that works, and um, yeah, so cultivating a mailing list may be your ultimate. Uh, uh, the ultimate tool to to not even having to worry about this uh, <laughs> until Gmail says, "Oh, guess what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. scan your email, and attachments yeah. are added to our AI." And finally, where in the world is Adam Bradford? <laughs> Smiteworks has hired D and D Beyond's founder uh, for chief of development of Fantasy Grounds. Mm -hmm. So yes, Smiteworks LLC is the makers of Fantasy Grounds. So we're going to see a big improvement in that platform. And uh, it was interesting. There were comments under this uh, article right away saying, oh, thank God, this 90s interface right. <laughs> on Fantasy Grounds sucks. And Adam was there to answer. So I thought that was a very, very cool. He jumped into the comments. So uh, leaving Demiplane, who was just acquired by Roll20, and moving to uh, Smiteworks. So his wealth of experience and expertise will be very useful as their development officer. So he founded D&D Beyond, the digital tool set, which was acquired by Hasbro. Uh, then jumped to Demiplane, which was <laughs> then acquired by Roll20. And yeah. he's just going to have to keep going, keep innovating, keep doing things. Oh, and I admire the fact that he's just not going to sit back and say, I guess I work for Roll20 now. He's going to you know, keep right. supporting, you know, platforms that have potential that just need someone to kind of point them in the right direction have the sensibility of a game designer and a you know a dedicated player and somebody interested in tabletop to kind of say that this is what you need to do if you want to attract players so uh smiteworks has said we are thrilled to welcome adam bradford to the team his expertise and vision are invaluable to grow fantasy grounds and provide our users with the best possible game experience we have a lot of great things in the works and we believe Adam is a perfect addition to achieve our goals. And Adam then said, I am excited, incredibly excited, not just excited, to be joining Smiteworks and have the opportunity to contribute to the ongoing success of Fantasy Grounds. The virtual tabletop space is evolving rapidly uh, to make playing games, uh, playing these games we love more convenient than ever. I look forward to working with the outstanding team at Smiteworks to continue driving innovation and growing the tabletop role-playing space. So yeah, so- uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Those announcements were fine. Mm -hmm. The quote mm -hmm. right? <laughs> are kind of meaningless. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not saying any particular person, but I'm like, you, as someone who works on the fringe of corporate culture, mm -hmm. like, you have to say that. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, right. Well, at least we know they didn't drag him away at gunpoint, you know, to smite. They, 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 they locked, him, right? they locked yeah. him in the dungeons yeah. of smite. Well, I'm not saying that. Yeah, smite works. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's not me saying only them, like any kind of mm -hmm, corporate, right? Mm -hmm. Any kind of public announcement. You're just like, you had to say this. So yeah. <laughs> right, right. So some of the comments under this announcement were, uh, uh, yeah, their decision to be backwards compatible and to have a UI that looks like 1990 has really kept me from going back to yeah, Fantasy well. Grounds. And then it's going to be hard to beat Roll20 and Foundry. You know, Fantasy Grounds has some real strengths, but they're shot at surviving whatever they do and whatever uh, Watsi does is, is, you know, yet to be determined. Yep. But Adam was there to say, oh, we're bringing the AI to great new places. One of my two top core priorities will be establishing a core, um, a modern and polished visual identity for Fantasy Grounds. Okay. Since I've been the driving force behind both D&D uh, uh, &D Beyond and Demiplane. So an updated AI is basically the only thing. UI, that, UI, uh, careful, UI. U, oh, UI, what is it? Not AI. Oh, yeah, AI, AI, yep. AI, AI, UI uh, is basically the only thing. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's not an AI preventing me from using Fantasy Grounds. Uh, yeah, so people keep reiterating yeah. that and say, yeah, that, that's the first thing they're going to do. And I think that's, I mean, I that's kept it very compatible so that, you know, people running old PCs are not going to have to worry if this thing is going to give them trouble right, or yeah. not. But at the same time, I think that does limit them from getting new players because when they say sc see screenshots of all the VTTs and they're like, what's that? You know, it, right. it's, it's a little bit discouraging. Yeah, so we're going to see Fantasy Ground stepping up. So that's going to mean games, uh, they don't have to choose one, but uh, these companies like, you know, Free League and Modifius, yeah. they're going to have to make choices. You know, are we going to do Roll20 content? Are we going to do, like, wh who are we going to, 
uh, so we're seeing like the, the, the streaming servicification of role playing games. Right. Yeah. The VTTs are going to kind of there, there's going to be a, a pecking order, and uh, you know if you want to go where the players are, and and because they often these are part of crowdfunding campaigns. It's a, it's an option yeah. or a stretch goal in a crowdfunding campaign. So they're going to say, hey, available on Fantasy Grounds, or we'll unlock this for Alchemy or for uh, Roll Twenty. So yeah, we're gonna see how people divide and how people shake up, and of course, each of them have their their strengths. And obviously, things like Roll Twenty were initially built for Five E. They're really, probably yeah. for Four E almost. <laughs> they were built to, um, uh, you know, play tokens on, in grid combat, and uh, so there are going to be different flavors. You know, more theater of the mind, uh, less tactical combat that uh, certain VTTs are going to be better at, especially like Alchemy. They're gonna they're they're so heavily into designing, uh, using the art uh, assets and the designing animations and just these screens that are just gorgeous to mm. look at. So you can just sit on that screen and do your theater of the mind and then switch over to a, a tactical version if if needed. So yeah, we're gonna see uh, people kind of figuring out how they wanna play. And I, I hope it doesn't mean, I, I think they've already mentioned, you know, going from real life to virtual and trying to make that seamless. I think that's, that's not a bad idea. And the thing that you encounter when you're playing in real life with physical character sheets as oh, I forgot my character sheet and it's nice to be able to log into a VTT yeah, sure. yep. and the current version is there. So those sorts of things I think are going to actually supplement playing in, in real life because you do run into, I don't have this, I don't have that. And on the VTT, there's dice rollers, there's your character yep. sheet there. And, and, you know, if you don't have minis and a, and a, a and graph paper, you can actually, Someone can open a. What era did you play? Minis and graph paper. Yeah. So, oops, oops. I Is that part of the era you had a mapper and a caller yes. at the group? Yeah. And, uh, uh, but you know those, these tools, and, and we're going to be seeing like they've already people have tried to implement like you know augmented reality and stuff and VR into yeah. being physical and then standing there with an iPad in front of your face. So we'll see how um, how some of this technology shakes out. But there's a lot of you know competitors are kind of building up and and uh, like I said the. Um, I think the OGL debacle, you know, kind of got uh, cobbled press and a lot of people mm. like ready with their version of 5e. And so I think what Watsi is doing with whatever their VTT is, is getting other people to kind of let's join forces. Let's make the best product possible. Let's give the you know, most seamless, easiest, you know, the lowest barrier to entry. Or mm -hmm. I mean, not not on or, but I think you're right. OK, the, I got to wrap it up soon because I got to get mm -hmm. back to boring last work. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. OGL debacle kind like people or or companies that were in a position to kind of take advantage of that mm -hmm. i think we're still the jury is still out on whether they've they've oh, done yeah, well or yeah. not right but i think maybe what this is or my guess would be is vtt companies positioning themselves to take advantage if watsy fucks up mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. whatever yeah. vtt they're making like they want to be in, the best position they can be to like to be able to jump in and be like, oh, you're not playing Five E, come to ours, or you're not happy with Watsi's tools, come play ours. Yeah, like, yeah. They instead of scrambling to mm. do it, they got to be like, we have to be as close as possible to be able to jump to take advantage of this as soon as they make a misstep. Yeah, and we've already seen with the OGL that um, what was kind of revealed about their actual intentions is Hasbro is going to be as cutthroat and brutal as possible. Well, the possible. original OGL was cutthroat. The yeah, original yeah. OGL was by design mm -hmm. and by admission of the person who wrote it mm -hmm. a way to strangle non-D20 ah. games, to right. bring everything under this D20 umbrella mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to make it harder for other games that didn't use D20s and all the same system to to function. So yeah. it, this isn't like a sudden, well, for me at least, this isn't like a sudden <laughs> thing like, oh, Watsi suddenly become very cutthroat. Well, they've always been cutthroat, <laughs> right, right, right. right? Yeah, and um, so now that we're in more of a digital world, they have the ability to say, oh, guess what? DM skill, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You know, they can revoke rights and licenses and things so there is going to be some people that you know so they're, they're trying to just you know circle the wagons and yeah. kind of get ready for whatever games uh wizards of the coast is going to be playing with their content yeah. yay good fun but it's under creative commons right the, I, the I don't even know anymore yeah. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see what happens we will see what happens so that'll do it for this week where can people find you um social media until it collapses right <laughs> like like people said last week i am on threads but only because like i cross post from a couple times anyway I'm still on instagram so i'm facebook occasionally and uh blue sky hive mind h-y-v-e-m-y-n-d where lately i've been developed 
being a little tactical game that fits in a mint tin box. Oh, nice. We'll see how far that gets before I lose interest and <laughs> work on something else. It's kind of already started to happen. You have to eat all the mints first. You have to first. eat all the mints first, right? Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, that's the hard part. Nice. So, how about you? Oh, and I'm still doing my single panel gag cartoon, but I have switched schedules of the live stream. Now I'm doing a monthly live stream. So I did all of June's wow. cartoons last Thursday, yes. Uh, so, or, or yeah, yesterday. <laughs> so, um, uh, or then still, I'm sorry, Tuesday. So, I'm, and it's not going to be a regular streaming schedule, but there will be one kind of mega stream, <clears throat> mega stream, mega stream every month um, where I'll, I'll just sit and do all the cartoons and just because uh, what I was doing is I just needed to get the work done. I was popping in for an hour right. and live streaming for an hour is not. Uh, if you want to read the cartoon, uh, go comics.com slash domestic abuse. But if you like what we're doing here on the weekly, <clears throat> Consider becoming a weakling. The strongest of all supporters. On patreon.com slash upturned table. So we have several tiers to kind of let us know what you like uh, on our channel, what content you want to support. Uh, we've got uh, yeah, lore videos, actual plays, uh, reviews, all kinds of fun stuff. And that's upturntable.com to find all of that. And on all social media, Upturn Table. Hey. So that'll do it for this week. We'll be back next week. Later, mortals. Goodbye.